My entitled manager writes me up and punishes me for my coworker refusing to show up for her shift. And I honestly could not be more disgusted and upset. Here's what happened. So this was in 2010 or 2011, somewhere in there. I was working for a hotel that is known for pointing in four directions, if you know what I mean. Frankly, it was kind of a terrible place. But that was due to the owners being garbage themselves. So I was a full-time auditor at a cheap hotel where we were also playing host to airline crews. Yes, I know why everyone hates airline crews and these were not any different but still only play a peripheral part in this. The part-time auditor we'll call them by the name of LaShonda that's not her real name, was also part-time overnight house person as well as a shuttle driver. Basically she was supposed to mop, run things to rooms and drive the shuttle to and from the airport. That was it. For this place that amounted to maybe an hour and a half of actual work 98% of the time. Soon enough her 14 year old daughter gets pregnant And as soon as I would walk into work, LaShonda would call the hotel going, Oh, OP, I can't come in tonight. I'm just too tired. I can't stay awake. I'm too tired to come to work tonight. The first couple of times, I tried to be understanding, but she soon began to do this every single shift. It got to the point of me begging her on the phone to come in. LaShonda, you live five minutes away. Please, just come in. You can even just sleep until the flight crew arrives at six o'clock. We can't afford to keep calling cabs for them every Every day. I don't care if you come in to get paid to sleep for seven hours. Just please come into work so I don't have to stress about these flight crews. To which she adamantly refused. She said, um, no, I can't do that. I'm just too tired. I'm just so tired all the time. I just can't come in. After a few weeks of this, I had a sit down with the general manager who had recently been put in after the bank repossessed the hotel from the terrible owners. I told her the situation and the general manager tells me that LaShonda is a single mom with four kids and a grandkid on the way, so it's understandable that she is tired. They then look at me and say, but you on the other hand have no kids, and you can't possibly understand what she's going through as a single mom. And what happened next absolutely blew my mind as my general manager actually had the audacity to write me up and assign me to some kind of diversity training because apparently I just didn't get it. My general manager also went on to tell me that she doesn't want to hear about this ever again. This all, of course, just infuriated me, but I had to keep it bottled up for the time being. I polished up my resume and I applied to other jobs, finding a different full-time job to work and going part-time on this one. But that didn't last long because the GM hired somebody that clearly just didn't like me and they decided to fire me from there. Ultimately, though, it was a blessing in disguise because the person they hired to literally replace me for my work never even came in for his first shift. And as a result of that, as well as the poor management from pretty much everybody involved. The hotel would eventually get bought out and remodeled into something else. So you know what? I've never been happier to be fired from a job before in my life. The manager in this story is an absolute piece of garbage. Not only did they completely ignore the complaints of this original poster, but they also had the audacity to write them up for something that their co-worker was actively doing. I mean, it's not their fault that this person is absolutely overwhelmed with being a single mom and not being able to show up to work. Why on earth would the original poster have to be punished for someone else's inability to come to work? Like, that is so absolutely backwards, it's not even funny. But it sounds like this person getting fired from this job was a blessing in disguise because literally months later, they would have lost their job anyways, as that hotel's gonna get bought out and everybody's gonna be out on their butts. So in my opinion, they did this all absolutely right. They kept it to themselves and they said, screw this, I'm getting another job. And I know for a fact that if I was in his shoes, I definitely definitely would have done the exact same thing. Look for another job and say sayonara to these people because that place really did suck and nobody deserves to get treated like that. This next story is an update from a previous story that we discussed where the original poster had their car stolen by their brother with the car eventually getting crashed into a ditch and the brother going to jail. And here's where the original poster went from there. They said, my brother had promised that he would pay for the damages to my car. And you know what? He kept that promise. The body shop guy cut me a deal at a fair price for replacing the damages on my Crown Vic. Now, I thought that the damage was only cosmetic, but there was some minor damage the body shop will need to pull out, but it's not frame damage, and they told me that it is an easy job to straighten out. There was some minor damage to the fender panels, but they said they're easy to fix, especially if I don't care that they're perfect, and the new parts will be painted in a matching color, which is all good. My brother willingly paid cash in advance to the body shop after getting the quote from them. He seemed all too 
too eager to hand the money over and politely bid me a goodbye. I won't say how much it was, but it definitely hurt his savings, especially after the fine he had to pay for driving without a license. He was wanting to get a replacement car as well, but he won't be getting one until his license suspension is over anyways. And I don't know when that'll be, but I think it's going to be for a good while. Anyway, my parents had given my brother a ride to the body shop, and as soon as he was out the door, they stayed and admonished me for making him spend all his money fixing my car. I imagined that they were about to say something about how I should have just lent him my car in the first place and how this all would have been prevented if I had just done that. But something in me snapped and I cut them off and that's when it all spilled out. I called them out on everything that came to mind. All the favoritism and how they act like my brother has always been more important. How I had to move in with my uncle just to escape their unfair treatment. Also about how they let my brother steal my car and that they tried to lie to me until I threatened to call the police. How they themselves tried to lie to the police by saying I was the one driving the car when my brother is the one that crashed it and so on and so on. And I ended it all with me saying how stupid it was that they were mad at me for my brother having to pay for damages that he caused on my car by stealing it and he drove it without a license while intoxicated. By the time I finally stopped, I was nearly out of breath. My mother was crying and my father was red in the face and looked like he was about to explode. Then he just took my mother by the hand and started to walk out. But some guy I don't know that was sitting near the door blurted out and said, you guys are narcissists. Well, when this guy said this, this was enough to set my father off completely over the edge because he started attacking this guy. My father is not a small man. He knows how to throw a punch. So he started to get in a fight with this guy like an angry gorilla. I yelled for the clerk to call the cops and they did. My father heard that and bolted out the door and drove off. He actually left my mother behind crying in the lobby. The police had to pick him up at his home and he surprisingly cooperated when he was arrested. But now Now, he's looking at charges for assault. The guy he beat up suffered a very swollen black eye and a possible broken nose and concussion. I was there when they were loading him into the ambulance to get him to the hospital. My mother has called me crying and blaming herself, but my uncle is saying that it's about time that my dad tasted some karma and my brother is doing everything he can to stay out of it. And honestly, this is not how I thought everything was going to go down. I have to give it to the bystander that called these people out because yes, these parents are absolutely narcissists. They treated their son so terribly, so badly that he had to move out and just live with his uncle just so he could escape this weird abuse. And that is honestly unacceptable. If they were simply better parents, then things literally would not have gotten so bad. Like the original poster hasn't done anything wrong. It's his stupid brother and his stupid parents who all collectively basically try to ruin this guy's life. And I have to agree with the uncle. It is about time that karma came back for this father who has treated his son so badly for so many years. So honestly, he gets what's coming to him and hopefully some jail time as well as a hefty fine and a possible restraining order will hopefully straighten him out. Am I the jerk for making my boyfriend choose between my relationship with him or his friends? I'm a 22-year-old female and I've been with my boyfriend for about two years now. My boyfriend was meant to go on a boys trip for a week. The main idea of the trip was for them to go and party. Two weeks prior before they were scheduled to go, I found out that my boyfriend had been cheating on me for the previous 11 months and all of his friends were aware of it and once I found out about that, I broke up with him instantly. Now, because we live together, neither of us are in a position to just get up and move out. Due to this, he spent the next four days begging me to give him another chance. Eventually, and after four days, I gave in and agreed to give him a second chance as long as he didn't go on holiday with his friends, as I wouldn't feel comfortable after everything that happened so recently, as well as the fact that all of those boys knew and had no problem with it. He initially agreed and said he would do anything to make this work and to gain my trust back. A few days before they were set to leave for the trip, my boyfriend started to get really angry that I wasn't letting him go on this trip. I said multiple times that if he wanted to go, he could, but I would break up with him because I wasn't okay with it. He ended up not going, but the whole time was taking everything out on me. 
I have tried to explain that I was already hesitant to get back together with him after everything he's done. And I believe after what he has done, my trust needs to be earned back with actions and time. I am not going to give it back instantly just to see if he lives up to what he says. All of his friends have been trash talking me for putting him in the position to have to choose between me or his friends for the weekend. So it honestly begs the question, am I the jerk for forcing my boyfriend to make this decision? This story sounds like an absolute mess because this guy cheats on you and then you bring him back. Regardless of if you live with him or not, I really just don't think it was a wise decision to let this guy back into your life. He is clearly not a good influence and he clearly is going to cheat again. Like this is not something that he did by accident. It's something he thought about and he really thought through. So it's really disappointing to see that you caved to his requests and decided to let him back into your life. In my opinion, you can do so much better than this. And you said it best as well. All of his friends knew about this and not a single person came forward to try and tell you that he's cheating on you. And that is so disrespectful in my opinion. There's no good excuse to justify that action. So given the circumstances, I don't blame you for making him choose. If you really do want to try and make this relationship work, he really does need to decide if he wants to be with you or not. But I know for a fact if I was in your shoes, there's no way I would have let him back, regardless of if he's living with me or not. I do not need that kind of energy in my life, and I honestly think you don't either. My boyfriend wants to marry me, but he doesn't want to have any kind of wedding ceremony just so he can protect his father's feelings, as well as his absence from this future wedding. And it's all so confusing, and it hurts my feelings, and I don't know what to do. So my boyfriend of four and a half years says that he wants to marry me, but he doesn't want to have a wedding. For some background, we've been living together for two years and have an otherwise amazing relationship. He does not have a relationship with his dad, which is his only parent, but seems to want to establish one even though this man is pushing him away and keeps treating him with utter disrespect. We've been talking about marriage and our timeline and plans practically since we started dating. We both initially wanted a big wedding after I was done with grad school back in 2021, but then we realized we weren't in a rush to get married and obviously didn't make any plans because of COVID-related restrictions. This year, right after New Year's, he says 2022 would be a great year to get married. We talk about it briefly, and then I didn't bring it up again because I was expecting a proposal of some kind. By mid-April, I realized there would be no way to have the wedding that we talked about in 2022. I bring it up, and he says his relationship with his dad is making him feel depressed, and he needs time to deal with his feelings, so I just let it go, but remind him that if we do plan on a wedding, we need to at least set a date. I propose maybe the summer of 2023, and we need to do this because many of our family members that we'd want to be there live abroad and they need plenty of time to make plans. In July, he drunkenly tells me that his dad disapproves of our relationship because apparently he doesn't like my family, even though he doesn't know any of us directly and that this has been weighing on him for some time. I thought, okay, he didn't want to get married before sharing this with me and I didn't think much of it. Come September and I finally bring it up and I ask what's happening. He tells me he wants to get married, but he doesn't want to have a wedding. He wants our closest people there, but not his dad. And he doesn't feel comfortable having a huge wedding because people would talk about his dad being absent. And even though they do not have a relationship, he wants to try to protect him from the humiliation. I believe he wants to marry me because he's been trying to do a civil ceremony as soon as possible. And this is all because we talked about starting a family and making big purchases like a car or a home. He, however, is adamant about not wanting a wedding. Bear in mind, we come from a culture in East Europe where huge weddings with 300 plus people are definitely the norm and family is usually very involved. I told him I would feel humiliated if he chose not to have the wedding we've been planning for for over three years. And this is something that I've told my family and friends about. And this all stems back to him just trying to be protective of his father's feelings and the public opinion over his absence. Not to mention the fact that this man is against me even though he's never met me. I feel so disappointed and I'm incredibly hurt that I am now considering breaking up with him. Talking about the wedding so much has made me not even want one, ever, because it will feel forced at this point. I just want him to choose me over anyone, and I honestly don't know what to do. It seems like his father's opinions and his feelings are really driving what he can and can't do in his life. Like, it's totally fine not to have a big wedding, or to choose to have like a smaller ceremony, or something like that. I think that's something reasonable that you can both come to a conclusion over, but for him to make all these decisions based on his father not showing up to the wedding, just 
to try and protect this father, who, by the way, does not treat him nicely, in my opinion, is a big problem. Like you said it yourself, you want him choosing you over anybody else. And that includes his absent father who doesn't like you for whatever reason. So I think maybe having a conversation about this with him would go really far in trying to figure this out. Because this wedding is supposed to be about you two. And unfortunately, he's making it all about his dad. Today, I messed up by accidentally inviting my plumber over for Thanksgiving. My plumber is a really nice guy with a heart of gold. I've actually started smiling when I clog the toilet because it means he's coming over with his Italian accent and his arcane sense of humor. I honestly couldn't say what it is about him that excites me so much. I guess we all just have people in our lives that we for some reason just enjoy being around and he definitely is one of those. Yesterday as he fixed my sink, we had one of our most intimate conversations ever. I told him about my family history of alcoholism and he opened up about how his ex-wife was supposed to join him in the States a few years back but instead fell in love with another man. He now apparently lives alone while all his family is still in Italy and he just had a major falling out with three of his best friends. After he was done working, I opened up a bottle of tequila and we kept taking shots and talking until both of us were completely wasted. At one point, I guess I felt really bad about his situation so I invited him over to Thanksgiving dinner and he began to weep. We hugged each other and he told me that he really appreciated it so much. Then we took three more shots and he drove home. My wife was already displeased to come home and find me drunk on a Sunday but things only got worse from there when I told her that our plumber was coming to our Thanksgiving dinner and at that point she went off. We've only been married a few months and this is going to be our first Thanksgiving as a family. Her parents and siblings are coming over and it's a huge deal for her. She really wants to prove herself as a hostess and as an adult. So as a result, she says there's no way the plumber is coming over for Thanksgiving. So now I have to call him or something just to let him know that he can't come over anymore. But that will honestly just shatter my heart and make his next house call very awkward. I might polish off the tequila tonight and send him a text message or something. But either way, my palms are really sweaty and I honestly am not looking forward to this. What a terrible situation to be stuck in. I mean, you obviously asked him to come over for Thanksgiving in a moment when you were both incredibly inebriated, but I honestly don't think the sentiment is lost in this situation. I think he really did mean it, and I think this guy really does want to come over, and he probably really was looking forward to it. He's clearly gone through a rough year, it sounds like, and it seems like there's been a lot of tragedies in his life. And it really sucks about his ex-wife as well. That's so sad. I mean, she literally left him to go with another guy in Italy, and three of his best friends friends just completely cut him loose and they had some kind of major falling out which I could imagine is really hard to deal with. So if I was in your shoes I would go back to my wife and say hey look this would really mean a lot to him and maybe explain his situation. It is Thanksgiving after all and I'm sure this guy would just be over on the side and it wouldn't be a big deal. You can say it's a family friend or something along those lines and it would really mean a lot to him to have somebody he could spend this holiday with because honestly he has nobody and you can also explain to her that you really think this would do a lot more damage by uninviting him than it would be to just let him come along for Thanksgiving and enjoy the celebration. So hopefully this conversation goes well because it seems like your plumber really is a nice guy and I think he would only add to this celebration instead of taking away from it like your wife is clearly assuming. My boyfriend has been incredibly insensitive to the fact that my dog passed away in my arms and I honestly don't know what to do. I am struggling to forgive my partner of three years. My My family dog, I'll call her Millie, of nearly 15 years passed away in my arms a few days ago. She was the best girl ever and I loved her so much. I am heartbroken and full of emotion right now, so I want some outside opinions. My partner recently moved here from out of state and has been staying with my mom for a few months while he finds a place to live. We had been dating long distance for a few years before he moved. I live a few hours from my mom's place and was visiting at the time. Well, on Monday morning, he was due to go pick up the keys for his new apartment. I was going to go with him, but Millie has been unwell for a while. And on Monday morning, just an hour before we were due to leave, she passed away peacefully. My mom and I were devastated. We couldn't stop crying and we still are. My partner was still getting his stuff together to leave. I was shocked he was still going to go. And after I said that, he offered to stay. He didn't even offer me a hug until I asked for it. Anyway, we agreed that he would leave. I think it was for the best, especially for my mom as she couldn't be comfortable crying in front of him. As he was walking out the door, 
I kept saying basically that she can't possibly be dead, that this isn't real, this can't be happening. My partner then replied in a very harsh tone that yes, she is dead, multiple times at that. I said to stop saying that, and he said it again as he raised his voice, saying he's dead. That's what a therapist would tell you. And when he said this, I was so shocked, I just shut the door in his face. At this point, Millie had only passed away 30 minutes ago. He has subsequently apologized and sent me flowers and a card for Millie, but it does not make up for what he said. I don't know if anything really can. He showed so little respect for Millie, as well as for me and my mom, who, by the way, gave him somewhere to live for several months for free. I'm just so disgusted that this is a person I've been in a relationship with. My mom heard him say all this, and she thinks that this was said in a dismissive and heartless tone. Knowing him, it was said as a dig, and it was said in a harsh way. At the same time, it was a high stress and high emotion situation, and I don't know if I'm judging him too harshly. Right now, I feel like I can never forgive him. My mom says I need to consider it from his perspective too. He was just going to get his keys and move. So maybe there's something there, but honestly, I don't know what to do. Yeah, the way your boyfriend was acting was incredibly inappropriate. Him saying over and over again that she's dead and that this is what a therapist would tell you is just super toxic in my opinion. Like there's no reason to act like that. You would think he would have a little bit more compassion towards his girlfriend who's clearly going through a rough time right now. So hopefully this can get figured out because the way he's acting is absolutely inappropriate. And if I was in your shoes, I really would be addressing this with him because I'm sure that if someone in his life, pet, family member, or otherwise had passed away suddenly in your arms, you would be there for him to support him. So it's just really disappointing to see that he would act otherwise. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.